Messieurs les présidents, dear presidents, dear heads of government, secretaries general, ministers, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen. It is with deep emotion and great solemnity that I welcome to Paris today the peace conference that is about to seal a comprehensive settlement of the conflict in Yugoslavia. The hope that is rising for all the peoples of former Yugoslavia will certainly not erase the memory of the 200,000 dead in, in this conflict the deadliest that Europe has known since the Second World War. With its dreadful train of tremendous suffering and with its millions of wounded and refugees. This rampage of horror will leave a deep wound in the heart of Europe. It gives the full measure of the efforts we must now make in order together to build peace. At this moment, when France is welcoming this conference of hope, I am thinking of the 56 French military men who paid with their lives for their commitment to the cause of peace. I am thinking of their families and of their loved ones. I am thinking of the blue helmets of all nationalities who were killed or wounded in this tragedy. And I say to myself that today we must show ourselves to be worthy of their memory, worthy of their suffering. I pay a special tribute to all those, whether soldiers or voluntary relief workers, who risk their lives so that peace might prevail over war so that respect for human dignity might prevail over hatred. I express my deepest gratitude, too, to the partners of France who mobilized alongside us in order to secure the release of the two French pilots who had been held for over a hundred days in Bosnia. The peace treaty that we are about to sign is the result of the agreement reached by the presidents of the states that have emerged from former Yugoslavia. They have chosen the path of reconciliation. This peace treaty is also the fruit of the determination shown these past few months by the entire international community. This determination led first to the setting up of the Rapid Response Force. Its resources, combined with those of NATO, modified the balance of forces in the field, guaranteed the respect due our soldiers, and thus opened up the way to peace. The gradual harmonization of the positions of the countries of Europe, of the United States, and of Russia within the contract group that was set up at the initiative of Mr. Alain Juppé created the prerequisites for the success of the negotiations at Dayton. I now hail the decisive contribution made by American diplomacy to this success. The lasting reestablishment of peace will be, first and foremost, the responsibility of the states and communities of that region. I call on their leaders to turn the page of war and hatred once and for all. I urge them to join together as statesmen and as men of peace to write the chapter of reconciliation. Let them draw inspiration from the great lesson that was given to us in their time by Chancellor Adenauer and by General de Gaulle. Dear Presidents, the determined support of the international community is indispensable to you as you make progress on this difficult path. Allow me to say that 
you can be completely sure that France will give you her, her full support. With her troops that are already present in the field, France will provide one of the main components of the international force that is charged with the military application of the agreement. Alongside the high representative, our friend Karl Bildt, France will contribute to the setting up of democratic institutions in Bosnia. France will see to the return of refugees to their homes and will support the enterprise of reconstruction. France has spared no effort to defend the identity of Bosnia-Herzegovina, a unified, multicultural, and democratic Bosnia-Herzegovina. It is in the same spirit that France will contribute to the full implementation of the agreement signed today. What is at stake here is our security. It is our values. It is also a certain conception of Europe. Our commitment in Bosnia is based on an ideal. Our com it expresses our rejection of ethnic and religious hatreds, of intolerance and of violence. The peoples that make up Bosnia must learn once again to live together with full respect for their differences. Each people must be able to express its belief freely within Republican and democratic institutions. It is in that spirit that I express the hope that the countries of the organization of the Islamic Conference be closely linked to the peace settlement. And I hail today the role that is theirs and the action that is also theirs. All the peoples of former Yugoslavia have their place in the European family. Since the time of General de Gaulle, France has always rejected the barriers raised in the very heart of our continent. The beginnings of a process of stability and good neighborliness in southeastern Europe, that is one of the achievements of the Conference of Paris, is a component of this vision. Today, we bring to the peoples of former Yugoslavia a promise of peace. Yet, true peace remains to be built in hearts and in minds. And with it, democracy, the freedom of human beings, and the reconciliation of peoples. Let us then reach out to them a brotherly hand. Thank you.
Son Excellence, Monsieur Alia, Alia Izetbegovic. His Excellency, Mr. Alia Izetbegovic, President of the Republic of Bosnia-Herzegovina. President Chirac, President Clinton, Secretary General of the United Nations, Presidents, Heads of Government, Your Excellencies, Ministers, Ladies and Gentlemen, I would like to thank the French state for playing host to this all-important conference, and I would like to thank France for their kind hospitality. I would like to thank all those in attendance today for having made this conference possible. And more particularly, I would like to pay tribute to the American government, to the American Congress, uh, and to President Clinton for their endeavors, past, present, and future, so that war be brought to an end in this region, and so that uh, peace be ushered in. We have uh, been gathered here so as to sign the uh, peace agreement on Bosnia-Herzegovina, which was initialed a few days ago. My government is taking part in this agreement without any enthusiasm, but as someone taking a bitter yet useful potion or medication. That being said, may I add that the assigning of this agreement is done in full sincerity on our part, and uh, the agreement will be duly respected. Our aim was to maintain a unified Bosnia. The various articles of the agreement guarantee this, but will this truly materialize or will it simply remain uh, something on paper? This will depend on us and on what we want to achieve. Uh, the battle to be waged so as to attain these goals is neither lost nor won. In the future, it will develop uh, with uh, different means uh, thanks to the force of uh, ideas and action. We have always asserted that uh, our uh, strength, our position would prevail, was respected by all citizens, and we have to prove this today. It is on the basis of uh, uh, these premises that we tell the Serbs that the war is over, that hatred should no longer be heard. There will be no revenge sought, there will be no vengeance sought, but justice has to obtain. Human rights have to be duly respected throughout the um, guilty parties must be punished because there is a guilt borne by some. The Serbs have to remain in their homes or leave if they so want. We invite them to remain in their homes, provided that they duly abide by the laws of Bosnia-Herzegovina that ban violence. We ask them to um, insist with their uh, next of kin to come back to their homes and respect to the uh, law of the land. Uh, we would uh, request international organizations to spare no effort so that all of the necessary contacts essential to implement uh, in a uh, fruitful manner the agreement be carried out. And we call upon the whole world at this historic moment so that assistance be given to Bosnia. Stick to your promises regarding the the assistance to be granted to my country and Bosnia will uh, be uh, will reward you through the maintenance of peace in this part of the world. I thank you. So, excellence. His Excellency, Mr. Slobodan Milosevic, President of the Republic of Serbia. Shirak, thank you for your hospitality. Presidents, uh, Prime Ministers, Secretary General of UN, ladies and gentlemen, by supporting peace in Bosnia, I am convinced that peace is in the interest of all peoples, all men and women living in our region. War has brought great human losses and enormous destruction. Much time, money and energy will be needed for reconstruction while pain and suffering that people have experienced will last long and will take more time to heal. 
but peace is the first necessary precondition for destruction and suffering to stop. Of course, peace does not solve all problems among the peoples that have been at war for the past years, but peace creates conditions to solve problems that continue to exist in a different way through civilized and humane means available to and worthy of man at the end of 20th century. These means are the only means that man ought to resort to in the communication with others, even if he does not agree with them. For my part, I am convinced that a common language will be found in the relations among the peoples of Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, that despite the agony that they have passed through, these peoples are at the threshold of solutions that will enable them to live in peace and in conformity with their interests. I am deeply convinced and I sincerely hope that the first elections in the Republika Srpska and the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina will bring in democratic institutions which will help the people in this land to lead a peaceful, modern and humane life. As to the implementation of the peace agreement and the role of the International Peace Force, the key of the success of its mission is even-handedness, just as a partiality is the key of failure. Even-handedness is the basis on which the entire Dayton Agreement is rested. I am therefore convinced that all international as well as internal factors who care for peace in Bosnia and Herzegovina and for the realization of Dayton Agreement will have an even-handed approach towards the parties that have been in conflict so far and towards their interests. All the peoples that have gone through war in Bosnia and Herzegovina should aim at achieving economic recovery and re-establishing links and contacts with other peoples, in other words, at living the life lived by all other peoples in Europe. I therefore wish all the peoples in the former Yugoslavia a lasting and durable peace. I thank the representatives of the international community and in particular the United States of America short of whose endeavors the Dayton Agreement would not have been possible for the efforts that facilitated the advent of peace and helped each of the three peoples to use the opportunities to achieve their interests. Thank you. Son Excellence, Monsieur Franjo Tudjman. His Excellency, Mr. Franjo Tudjman, President of the Republic of Croatia. Mr. President Chirac, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. In uh, history, many places have become memorable where historic uh, treaties were signed. And I am uh, bold enough to state that the signing ceremony today here in Paris is one of those historic momentous events and for all the reasons that led to the Bosnian crisis. The international community should well reflect why the crisis took on such proportions that it was no longer possible to solve it at the regional level but that major international powers had to come into the the picture. There are multiple crises there too. The crisis in Bosnia Herzegovina is merely the culmination of all the uh, reasons that led to the breakup of the former Yugoslavia in the broader context text of the collapse of the former communist states. Uh, that is uh, the backdrop of the crisis. The crisis that was spurred by deep-rooted 
reasons, essentially the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, but even further going back to the partitioning of the Roman Empire and the breakup between the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Empire, not to mention the significance of the Ottoman conquest. Marshal Tito, during World War II, managed to revamp Yugoslavia and uh, renew it on uh, democratic basis. The communist uh, fabric of Yugoslavia was uh, accepted so as to maintain the order which ensued from the Versailles Treaty, but uh, the uh, spectrum of the partitioning of uh, Europe falling Yalta still hovered over us. Uh, the Austrian protectorate over Bosnia-Herzegovina vanished when Yugoslavia was created. Nonetheless, uh, differences in civilization patterns within Bosnia remained essential. And in uh, trying to solve the problem, one created as a people a religious community, the Muslims. Subsequently, towards the end of the 80s, an aggression was perpetrated against Slovenia, and then it uh, reached Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina. And this uh, could have very well lit up the whole region and uh, put the whole region ablaze. Let us not forget that it's in Sarajevo that World War I broke out. Croatia is uh, very closely linked to Bosnia-Herzegovina throughout history. This has been the case, and we would like to thank uh, all of those who were uh, involved within the UN and the international community, all of the agents instrumental in the signing of this agreement. First and foremost, the United States of America and President Clinton, who played a decisive role in the signing of uh, this agreement. And then the uh, member states of the contact group, Germany, the UK, and uh, France, Interalia, and especially we would like to thank France and President Jacques Chirac hosting us today. This. Uh, Achievement was made possible only thanks to the decisive role played by uh, the United States and the United Nations. And this is an agreement which is vital for the ushering in of an international order in this part of the world. Croatia shall spare no efforts so that uh, the agreements uh, leading to uh, the uh, Federation and to uh, the uh, restoration of peace in Bosnia-Herzegovina be duly abided by. This is the sine qua non condition for mutual recognition of our states. This is essential for the uh, recognition of all of the states uh, which were born out of the former Yugoslavia. We have uh, to uh, complete the whole process regarding the succession states and also as regards uh, the uh, rebuilding of war ravaged territories. All of the successor countries, the former Yugoslavia, should establish normal relations amongst themselves, and Croatia is greatly attached to this. Ladies and gentlemen, the signing of this agreement is a major stride forward which should make it possible to put an end to one of the uh, most serious political and military crises of our present age. All those taking part in this historic event must see to it that these uh, peace efforts not be jeopardized, these peace efforts so painstakingly achieved. I thank you for your attention. Monsieur Boutros, Boutros Khali. His Excellency, Mr. Boutros, Boutros Hali, Secretary General of the United Nations. Messieurs les Présidents. Presidents, Prime Ministers, Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen.
the signing ceremony bringing together here today in Paris uh, the main uh, of the agents involved in this uh, peace process have shown that the road to peace uh, calls for patience and tenacity, open-mindedness and resolve. Uh, and this is why we can surely harbor hope that uh, heretofore the inhabitants of Bosnia-Herzegovina, a member state of the United Nations, will finally be in a position to live in peace and uh, in uh, a context of genuine dialogue. But at the time when we sign these peace accords, my uh, thoughts go to all those who for the past three years have been uh, dedicating themselves, have sometimes fallen victim to their efforts uh, under the flag of the United Nations. Without their efforts, their worthy efforts, such a result might not have been possible. The populations that have been stricken throughout the war years uh, we're in a position to gauge uh, the uh, courage and dedication of our blue helmets, and they deserve uh, the rightful recognition and uh, um, gratitude of the international community, not to mention the states uh, that made available troops uh, and materiel for this very difficult mission. Everyone realizes that the London and Paris meeting are a testimony there to the maintenance of peace, humanitarian action, not to mention a number of very perilous missions. The uh, UN soldiers uh, have uh, made it possible for diplomats to work out an agreement. All those who unstintingly made a contribution to peace and all of the members of the contact group know full well that the United Nations were always keen to accompany their efforts. And today, more than ever in the past, we shall spare no effort so as to help all of the partners concerned to implement the various provisions of the agreement. As of now, the United Nations has been working in close cooperation with NATO so as to ensure the smoothest transition possible with the international force. And in coming months, uh, the United Nations organization shall pursue its efforts, and more specifically by taking part in the international police force, by assisting refugees, uh, and by uh, seeing to it with other international organizations that protection of human rights be ensured. However, we realize full well that the situation remains a very fragile one, especially in eastern Slavonia. And the United Nations in former Yugoslavia has already discharged difficult missions, sometimes missions impossible. And the United Nations is quite prepared to go on doing so if this can be of service to the diplomacy of its member states. And it redounds to the credit of the United Nations that it discharges the most uh, thankless task for the benefit of the international community. However, no one should be uh, remiss uh, of the fact and should be oblivious of the fact that the United Nations is only the reflection of the resolve of member states and it will remain powerless if it is not given the necessary wherewithal by its member state. General de Gaulle in the midst of turmoil constantly called upon one and all to uh, pursue uh, the uh, common wheel. We are all servants to the common wheel and today it is the United Nations, it is for the United Nations to uh, serve the international uh, interest of the international community to serve the common weal. And it is from that vantage point that I applaud the agreement that you have signed here today in Paris. I thank you for your attention. Son Excellence, Monsieur Javier Solana. His Excellency, Mr. Javier Solana, designate Secretary General of NATO. Monsieur le Président de la République. President of the Republic, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. This is indeed a momentous day, an important day not only for the people of Bosnia-Herzegovina, but also for all the peoples of Europe and of the Euro-Atlantic community. The Atlantic Alliance uh, has as one of its missions to maintain peace and stability in Europe. 
And it is uh, from that perspective that for over three years, the international community has called upon NATO to assist in putting an end to war in former Yugoslavia. Ever since a number of measures were taken to ensure respect of the naval embargo imposed in the Adriatic uh, through the wise use of air power, NATO's goal has never been to wage war, but simply to put an end to it. Thanks to the efforts being deployed by one and all, an end has been brought to war. It is high time now to win peace. The Atlantic Alliance, on acting under terms of reference remitted to it by the UN Security Council, stands ready to play its role in the implementation of the peace agreement signed here today in the city of Paris. Our goals are crystal clear. Guarantee the respect of the military component of the peace agreement. Secondly, see to it that the UN forces that wouldn't be transferred to the implementation force uh, be in a position to withdraw in a safe, orderly, and swift manner. And finally, bring about the necessary security conditions so that others be in a position to carry out non-military tasks included in the peace agreement. In order to attain these goals, NATO has brought together a genuine coalition for peace bringing together, as it does, the member countries of the alliance, but also, and that is equally important, bringing together other countries, many other countries that are not members of the alliance. All of these nations shall take part in the operation entitled Joint Endeavor. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, building a lasting peace cannot be achieved by military efforts alone. The people of the region must also know that the international community will help them rebuild their shattered lives. The Alliance will cooperate closely and effectively with other international institutions, and in particular with the High Representative, in mobilizing and coordinating the civilian reconstruction efforts which are crucial to the success. However, the ultimate responsibility for a lasting peace lies with the parties who today have signed the peace agreement. I wish to assure you that the implementation force will act in an even-handed fashion. But let me also underline that we expect full cooperation and total commitment of the parties to the peace agreement and to its military provisions. I strongly believe that we can count on such cooperation. The peoples of Bosnia have had enough of killing, enough of destruction. They want to join a wider Euro-Atlantic community, a community which has put the Cold War behind it and looks forward to a new year of peace and prosperity for all. The Alliance is privileged to help them achieve this goal, whose realization is so important to our own dream, a dream of a Europe whole and free. Thank you very much. Son Excellence, Monsieur his Excellency, Mr. Karl Bildt, co-president of the steering committee of the International Conference on Former Yugoslavia. Now has the floor. Mr. President, Prime Ministers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. War has come to an end in Bosnia, and we are from today starting the difficult road towards building a genuine and a true peace. The Bosnia of today is a shattered 
divided country that has been torn apart by the most brutal and the most savage war in Europe in my generation. Gradually, we must start to create the conditions for bringing back together what must come back together for peace to last and for justice to be created for each and everyone in this Bosnia, Bosnian Muslims, Bosnian Serbs, Bosnian Croats, a country for all. We all know that this is going to be far from easy. Military implementation is going to be the key to stopping the war and preventing it from restarting, and that is essential. Political, civilian, economic, humanitarian implementation will be the key to building that lasting peace that the peoples of Bosnia are hoping for. And the tasks we are going to face are going to be as difficult and as demanding. To make it possible for the millions of displaced peoples, shattered families, to return to their homes or to the places of their choosing. To supervise the holding of elections in uh, all of Bosnia, as well as in the Federation and the Republic of Serbska, to create new con conditions for reconciliation, to start the process of rebuilding a destroyed economy, to secure the human rights for each and everyone, to build regional stability, not primarily by more arms, but preferably by fewer arms in the region. All this is the responsibility primarily of the peoples and the leaders of Bosnia itself. It is their land, it's their peace, it's their future. But it is our task to help, to facilitate and to assist. And that we will do with all of the determination that we together, all of the countries of Europe, the Americas, the United States, Russia, the United Nations, all of the countries assembled here can and will mobilize to make peace work. True peace can never be built without genuine reconciliation. And nothing is as difficult after a war as reconciliation. Not to forget and not necessarily to forgive, but to think more about the better future than about the bitter past. France and Germany have joined hands over the battlefields of Verdun and the history of European cooperation and unification is the history of peoples coming together after the bitter experience of the past. This must come to Bosnia and to the peoples and nations of former Yugoslavia as well. Sarajevo, Mostar and Banja Luka is as much Europe as is Paris or Stockholm or Moscow. Today we start the difficult but important process of bringing a better European future to all of the peoples of Bosnia and to all of the peoples of this troubled part of our common continent. Son Excellence, Monsieur. His Excellency, Mr. Abdelatif Filali, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Morocco, now has the floor. Monsieur le Président, Presidents, Mr. Prime Minister. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me first of all to tell you how deeply, what deep satisfaction I feel in taking part in this conference of peace conference in Paris at the signing of the Dayton Conference, the agreement that sealed peace in Bosnia Herzegovina. I also wish to express my most heartfelt thanks to France and to the French government 
which is the host of this peace conference, and I wish to salute the efforts that France has made in this regard. The signing of the peace agreement is, is a historic event in this final decade of our century. It expresses the resolute commitment of the international community in its desire to put an end to this fratricidal war, which caused 200,000 deaths, 2 million displaced persons and refugees, and seriously threatened security and stability in that region. This agreement certainly represents a victory over those who had, who have attitudes that defied international law. It is also the happy culmination of the repeated efforts made by the international community in order to work for peace at the very heart of the old continent, Europe. So in the name of the Kingdom of Morocco, it is my pleasure and also in the name of all Muslim countries to congratulate yesterday's belligerents who have today become partners for peace. And I want to congratulate them all for their commitment for a fair, just, and even-handed settlement of the war in Yugoslavia. Certainly the recognition of the sovereignty of Bosnia-Herzegovina, its territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders, the confirmation of the indivisible nature of its capital, the return of re refugees and displaced persons, as well as the agreement reached on in international and institutional arrangements, are so many components that provide us with great satisfaction. We do nevertheless wish to stress that in order to create the foundations of a truly lasting peace, it is indispensable that all provisions of the agreement be properly implemented and completely so, without any selectivity, any bias, any exception being made. The success of this peace plan depends above all on the will and the determination of the former belligerents. It depends also, of course, on the support and determination of the international community in implementing it scrupulously with the uh, support of the I-4. That's why the return of peace to that region will depend on our own collective involvement, both on the political level and on the economic level, as well as on the military level. That is why I wish to stress the availability of Muslim countries, who have always felt great solidarity for peace who are always available to bring their contribution to the restoration of peace in Bosnia through participation in I-4 and in the work of reconstructing that country. The Kingdom of Morocco, for its part, has decided to send a contingent of 1,200 men as part of that effort. In, by participating in that way, Morocco wishes to make clear its own solidarity and its commitment its firm commitment in favor of peace. The agreement signed today is a major victory of peace over war and over intolerance. That is why we express the wish that the mobilization and, and the international mobilization and de that made possible the ceremony today may keep that same intensity in order to, that, that the innumerable challenges that face that region may well be met. I should like, in conclusion, to pay a tribute to all of those who paid a heavy price to ensure that the principles of tolerance and coherence and, and co cohesion and solidarity and peace would prevail. This signing will open up a new era today, ensuring peace, well-being, and tranquility among the peoples of former Yugoslavia. Thank you very much. Son Excellence, Monsieur. His Excellency, Mr. Ver Victor Chernomerdin, Prime Minister of the Russian Federation. <laughs> President Chirac, Presidents, ladies and gentlemen.
Today, we are indeed participating in a genuinely historic day. This is the uh, signing ceremony of the um, agreement uh, bringing in peace uh, in Bosnia. This is a major step forward towards uh, resolving the most uh, bloodletting conflict that we have witnessed in post-war Europe. And we have uh, every reasons for complimenting the leaders of uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, of the uh, uh, neighboring republics of uh, Croatia and Serbia, because despite their differences, they have uh, set for themselves the goal of achieving peace, and this meets the interests of one and all, and this is in the interest of all of the nations of the former Yugoslavia. The signing of the agreement is uh, an enormous responsibility that has to be borne both by the parties in the conflict and by the parties involved in the settlement of this conflict. I am convinced that the leaders of the countries of former Yugoslavia will show determination determination, resolve, and consistency in their efforts that they will discharge their duties on this very difficult road ahead at a time when one has to move on to the practical implementation of the agreement because without their goodwill there will be no way of overcoming the sequels of uh, the war, whatever the efforts are being made by the international community. We believe that uh, the main objective is to be impartial and unbiased vis-a-vis -vis all parties. Without this, one cannot bring about an irreversible settlement of the crisis. And I would like more especially to dwell on the need to lift the sanctions vis-a-vis -vis Serbia. And Russia has constantly come out in favor of lifting the sanctions. And uh, in this way, the Serbian nation would be totally uh, rid of these sanctions. That has always been the position of Russia. Now, uh, as regards uh, the political aspects of the settlement of the crisis, and uh, regarding the peace to be achieved in this region, I won't go into the details. We need to have uh, social, economic, and political conditions to achieve peace, whereby all of the nations of former Yugoslavia could revert to a normal course in their lives, uh, to mutual understanding, and embark on broad international cooperation. And here we have the civilian uh, component regarding the implementation of the agreement. We have to coordinate the activities of uh, OAS of the United Nations and the involvement of the various financial agencies. And we welcome the outcome of the London conference regarding the structure that will make it possible to have a uh, steering of uh, this uh, uh, process. And we are quite prepared to take part, an active, an active part in this effort. Russia is quite determined to make its utmost contribution in the implementation of the civilian component and also the economic facets thereof. We have had historic ties uh, with uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, and Serbia, and Russia will go on uh, playing an active role, as in the past, so as to develop uh, sound, well-balanced relations with all of the nations uh, that uh, inhabit the territories of former Yugoslavia. I thank you for your attention. Son Excellence, Monsieur. His Excellency. Mr. John Major, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Mr. President, Presidents, Prime Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, I join others this morning in thanking Jacques Chirac and the French government for their hospitality. And I think that here is a fitting place for this signing ceremony. Over the last uh, few years, French troops with those of the United Kingdom have formed the backbone of the United Nations operation in Bosnia and Herzegovina. During that time, our troops and other United Nations troops have worked together in hazardous circumstances, in peacekeeping, and in humanitarian relief. And during that period, they have suffered losses together. So I hope I may be able to say this morning, Mr. President, that it was especially heartwarming for us to see the release unharmed of your two brave pilots. I believe your stand was fully justified and I warmly congratulate you upon the outcome. Mr. President, 
Much of Central and Eastern Europe has moved successfully from authoritarian rule to democracy. But such uh, profound changes produce areas of tension, instability and disorder. And sadly, in the case of the former Yugoslavia, it led to the bitter war, the conclusion of which I hope we have seen this morning. The international community wasn't able to prevent that war breaking out. But since it began, it has worked patiently for peace. That peace, eventually, has been won, but at a terrible price. One in 20 of the former inhabitants of Bosnia and Herzegovina has been killed. Over a quarter of the population have had to flee from their homes, homes which are now mostly left in ruins. The conflict, we hope, is over. Uh, but the job truly is only half done. Ahead lies hope, but not yet fulfilment. And success will depend, crucially, on respect for the fundamental principles of this agreement, maintaining Bosnia and Herzegovina as a single, multi-ethnic state, providing for the safe return of refugees and turning away from the abomination of ethnic cleansing, ensuring that the human rights of all the people of Bosnia are fully and equally respected, and bringing to justice those guilty of crimes against humanity. The agreement signed this morning places clear and detailed obligations upon each of the parties. I'm sure they will meet them, and indeed it is in their interests as well as others that they respect and implement them scrupulously. But the peoples of Bosnia and Herzegovina will not be left alone in carrying through this peace agreement. From the time of the first London conference in August 1992, the international community has made a huge commitment to them. Successive teams of negotiators, Lord Carrington and Cyrus Vance, Lord Owen and Torvald Stoltenberg, Carl Bildt, the United Nations, the contact group, didn't spare themselves in laying the groundwork for the peace finally achieved. But we must now make no less a massive contribution to the implementation of that peace. 13,000 British troops will join the implementation force of some 60,000 overall, the biggest land operation undertaken in half a century of NATO's existence. And with the backing of the Peace Implementation Council set up last week, Carl Bildt will continue and coordinate the vital task of re-establishing legitimate political structures and restoring normal civilian life. The groundwork is now being laid for economic reconstruction as a joint effort between Europe, North America, other interested countries and the peoples of Bosnia themselves under the coordination of the World Bank. It's now up to all of us to turn ceasefire into peace, to turn peace into a lasting settlement and the countries of former Yugoslavia into a stable and prosperous part of the European family. It won't be easy to achieve that, but I profoundly believe that it is possible. We must turn that possibility into a reality, and today's ceremony is a vitally important landmark upon that road. Son Excellence, His Excellency Mr. Philip Felipe Gonzalez, President of the Spanish Government, now has the floor. Mr. Mr. President of the French Republic, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in the name of the European Union, I express the wish that I express the deep emotion I feel as I witness this, witness the signing of the agreement reached in Dayton. This agreement is to seal the end of a dramatic war on European soil, and it is to open up the way to a, to a future of hope, hope and peace. I should like to thank the President of the French Republic for having organized this conference and for the hospitality that he has shown. I should like to congratulate also, most warmly, the Presidents of Bosnia-Herzegovina, of Croatia, and of the Federative Republic of Yugoslavia for their courage and their vision of the future that have made possible this historic peace agreement. I should like to express our deep gratitude as well to the entire team of negotiators and thank
the representatives of the European Union for their great role. And I wish to mention, too, particularly the United States of America that gave a tremendous impetus to negotiations. I should like to congratulate also the rest of the members of the contact group, among whom we cannot forget, of course, the eminent role played by the Russian Federation over more than four years of war, the end of which, fortunately, we are hailing today the European Union and its member state, states who, who are the main contributors in terms of men and and relief and aid have played a fundamental role within the mission of the United Nations and the region to achieve a lasting peace. The war has, has caused tens of thousands of innocent victims in their memory, as well as in the memory of the Blue Helmets, of Fort of the European forces, the mediators, the volunteers of the non-governmental organizations who gave their lives for the noble cause of peace. To them, I pay a, a most fervent tribute. I'd like to thank them for their generosity and their devotion. And to do that, I, as, I express our determination to act so that their sacrifice may not be in vain. We shall now have to meet a tremendous challenge. That is, the faithful implementation of what has been decided upon. The implementation of the military aspects is now in progress thanks to the implementation forces directed by NATO. As far as civilian aspects, the London Conference has appointed a high representative and has created structures that are necessary to channel all the efforts of the international community. In the application of the peace agreement, we must pay special attention to the future of displaced persons and to the respect for, respect for human rights, which are basic pillars of any and all peaceful coexistence. We must nourish the hope that this uh, agreement has given rise to, and we must do everything we can so that the electoral processes may be implemented, those processes for which the OSCE will play a particularly important role. It will be necessary to create a mechanism based on confidence and security building measures that will banish any temptation to return to violence, which has caused such desolation. The process of stability and good neighborliness that was established during this conference will be of decisive importance for the attainment of this objective. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I reassert here the firm commitment of the European Union to the process of the implementation of the peace agreement and the reconstruction of the republics that have emerged from former Yugoslavia. A political effort, an economic effort, but also a human effort must be made because the framework of peace in the Balkans must also be the framework of peaceful coexistence within democratic structures that will make it possible for us to commit ourselves to the path of reconciliation and progress for the entire region. Thank you very much. Son Excellence, Monsieur. His Excellency, Mr. Helmut Kohl, Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany. Presidents. Honored colleagues, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a day on which we are sending a signal of hope to millions of human beings. And we are all very happy. Uh, we rejoice with the men, the women, and children of Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is an hour that is most important, who have made possible the signing of the agreement that has just happened today. The, they have made it possible for reason to prevail. They have made sacrifices. And they have made it possible that now there is hope for peace. We all feel that, of course. And now, of course, the documents themselves are, are different from peace itself. But here from Paris, there is a message going to the world, namely that peace in Bosnia-Herzegovina is the common objective of the parties to the conflict. It's the objective of the international community as well. The presidents of Bosnia-Herzegovina, Croatia, and Serbia have agreed to these peace documents and thereby shown tremendous courage 
in taking a tremendous decision, one with far-ranging consequences, and the world will do what it can to ensure that all parties to the, to the conflict keep, keep their word. The parties to the conflict are now prepared to, a to undertake a comprehensive uh, obligation, and to that end, we are going to send soldiers, we're going to send helpers of many kinds, so that in the reestablishment of peace, to help in the reestablishment of peace in a solely tried country, and we are confident that uh, this help given by friends will be well received. My country, the Federal Republic of Germany, is participating out of solidarity with the persons affected and, of course, in friendship with our partners. For the first time in this, to this extent, within an international peace force, the people of Germany support this commitment it, to a very large extent and the great, great majority. Of course, these deeds cannot, cannot heal the wounds that have been made this year, and, and we cannot uh, dissipate the grief of those who grieve, but there is hope and rejoicement, rejoicing that that we can do something at least for the victims of this war, the survivors of the war. And my dear friend, Mr. Chirac, at this hour, we rejoice with the French people uh, over the release of the French pilots. We know that peace is and must be more than the absence of war. And we are deeply satisfied that the parties of the conflict have agreed to broad principles and to measures for the long-range assurance of peaceful coexistence. We are particularly hail the fact that Bosnia-Herzegovina is remaining a state. This means that there must be respect for human beings and minorities. And, and the rule of law must be given so solid foundation in that country. Particularly important, ladies and gentlemen, is, is, the, is the right of refugees to return to their homes and their homeland. One thing is certain, peace can remain assured if human beings have a, have a vision of the future, if their children can see their homeland again and live there. Only then will they, in their generation, look to the future with confidence and shape it with confidence. Peace and security and human rights m must be given a concrete form, and they must open up the prospect of reconstruction. There are four, over 400,000 refugees that have found refuge. They expect us they expect from us, as all refugees, that, that we help them, that we set, set, the, set the stage for a good development of their country, and that in the final analysis, uh, uh, they can have a life that will respect human dignity. The states and uh, organizations assembled here have indicated their willingness to help, and the reconstruction in this region is for all of us an extraordinary, a tremendous task, one of great responsibility. So, so, so it is up to us to show the ability to implement this with concrete deeds. We, we want to stand by these people and help them to the full extent we can. The political representatives and, and, and leaders, to, to the political representatives and leaders, we say you have the prime responsibility for freedom and a peaceful future. But this will become a reality only if you look at the good side of your common history and follow in that tradition. And if we, from our conviction, provide you with assistance, full assistance, thank you very much. Son Excellence, Monsieur.
His Excellency, Mr. William Clinton, President of the United States of America. President Chirac, President Izabegovic, President Tuzman, President Milosevic, Secretary General Butsuskali, Secretary General Solana, High Representative Bilt, Prime Minister Falale, Prime Minister Chen Mirden, Prime Minister Major, Prime Minister Gonzalez, Chancellor Cole. Let me begin on behalf of the people of the United States by thanking all of those whose labor and wisdom helped to keep hope alive during the long, dark years of war. The humanitarian relief workers, the United Nations forces from Europe and beyond. Had it not been for their dedication and their sacrifice, the toll of the war in Bosnia would have been even graver. And I thank those whose work helped make this moment of peace possible, beginning with our host, Prime Minister Chirac, for his vigor and determination, Prime Minister Major, who was a full partner in the development of the Rapid Reaction Force and our NATO cooperation, and our friend Chancellor Cole, who has taken so many of the refugees and who now is sending German troops beyond his border in this historic common endeavor. I thank the leaders of a strong NATO and the determined negotiating team of Russians, Europeans, and Americans. All of you have brought us to this bright new day when Bosnia turns from the horror of war to the promise of peace. President Izabegovic, President Tuzman, President Milosevic. By making peace, you have answered the call of your people. You have heard them say, stop the war, end the suffering, give our children the blessings of a normal life. In this chorus for peace today, we also hear the hallowed voices of the victims, the children, whose playgrounds were shelled into killing fields, the young girls brutalized by rape, the men shot down in mass graves, those who starved in the camps, those who died in battle, the millions taken from their homes and torn from their families. Even from beyond the grave, there are victims singing the song of peace today. May their voices be in our minds and our hearts forever. In Dayton, these three Balkan leaders made the fateful choice for peace. Today, Mr. President, you have bound yourself to peace. But tomorrow, you must turn the pages of this agreement into a real life future of hope for those who have survived this horrible war. At your request, the United States and more than 25 other nations will send you our most precious resource, the men and women of our armed forces. Their mission, to allow the Bosnian people to emerge from a nightmare of fear into a new day of security according to terms you have approved in a manner that is even-handed and fair to all. The international community will work with you to change the face of Bosnia, to meet human needs, to repair and to rebuild, to, re to reunite children with their families and refugees with their homes, to oversee democratic elections, advance human rights, and call to account those accused of war crimes. We can do all these things, but we cannot guarantee the future of Bosnia. No one outside can guarantee that Muslims, Croats, and Serbs in Bosnia 
will come together and stay together as free citizens in a united country sharing a common destiny. Only the Bosnian people can do that. I know the losses have been staggering. The scars are deep. We feel even today that the wounds have not healed. But Bosnia must find a way with God's grace to lay down the hatreds, to give up the revenge, to go forward together. That is the road, indeed, that is the only road to the future. We see from Northern Ireland to the Middle East, from South Africa to Haiti, people turning from hatred to hope. Here in Europe, countries that for centuries fought now work together for peace. Soon the Bosnian people will see for themselves the awesome potential of people to turn from conflict to cooperation. In just a few days, troops from all over Europe and North America and elsewhere, troops from Great Britain, France, and Germany, troops from Greece and Turkey, troops from Poland and Lithuania, and troops from the United States and Russia. Former enemies, now friends, will answer the same call and share the same responsibilities to achieve the same goal, a lasting peace in Bosnia where enemies can become friends. Why would they do this? Because their hearts are broken by the suffering and the slaughter? Because their minds recoil at the prospect of needless spreading war in the heart of Europe? But they, we, do so in the face of skeptics who say the people of the Balkans cannot escape their bloody past, that Balkan hearts are too hard for peace. But let us remember, this war did violence not only to Bosnia's people, but also to Bosnia's history. For Bosnia once found unity in its diversity. Generations of Muslims, Orthodox, Catholics, and Jews lived side by side and enriched the world by their example. They built schools and libraries and wondrous places of worship. Part of the population laid down their tools on Friday, part on Saturday, and part on Sunday. But their lives were woven together by marriage and culture, work, a common language, and a shared pride in a place that then they all called home. Now if that past is any guide, this peace can take hold. And if the people of Bosnia want a decent future for their children, this peace must take hold. Here in this city of light, at this moment of hope, let us recall how this century, marked by so much progress and too much bloodshed, witnessed to humanity's best and humanity's worst, how this century began in Bosnia. At the dawn of the century, when gunfire in Sarajevo sparked the first of our two world wars, the British Foreign Secretary, Sir Edward Gray, said these words, the lamps are going out all over Europe. We shall not see them lit again in our lifetimes. But they were lit again by an extraordinary generation of Europeans and Americans. The torch of freedom they carried now shines more brightly than ever before on every continent. That torch can shine on Bosnia again, but first it must warm the hearts of the Bosnian people. So I say to all the people of the Balkans, on behalf of all of us who would come to see this peace take hold, you have seen what war has wrought, you know what peace can bring. Seize this chance 
and make it work. You can do nothing to erase the past, but you can do everything to build the future. Do not let your children down. Thank you.